Welcome to our lecture online. Our second example involves a proton, and we're trying to find the kinetic energy of the proton when we realize that it's moving in such a way that the wavelength of the proton is one femtometer, which means one times 10 to the minus 15 meters. That's a very small wavelength, and we suspect that it's moving at a very high velocity. It may be relativistic, so let's find out. Let's start with the wave equation from de Broglie that lambda is equal to Planck's constant divided by mv, which means that v is equal to h divided by m times the wavelength. So let's find out by not taking into account a relativistic situation what the velocity would be. So this would be equal to 6.626 times 10 to the minus 34, that's joules times seconds divided by the mass of a proton, 1.67, times 10 to the minus 27 kilograms, and the wavelength, 1 times 10 to the minus 15 meters. And let's see what that would be equal to. So we have 6.626 e to the 34 minus, divided by 1.67 e to the 27 minus, and divided by 1 e to the 15 minus equals, and it looks like it would be who? That would be equal to 3.97 times 10 to the 8 meters per second. And of course, that would be greater than the speed of light. So therefore, we're definitely working with a relativistic situation because no particle can ever move faster than the speed of light. Which means that in order to find the kinetic energy, we have to take into account this concept right here, that the kinetic energy can be found by taking the total energy and subtracting the rest mass energy to get the kinetic energy. So in other words, the kinetic energy is equal to the total energy minus the rest mass energy, m sub naught c squared. And to find the total energy, we can relate that to the rest mass energy and the momentum of the particle. In other words, the total energy can also be called the square root of m sub naught c squared plus p squared, oh, and this has to be squared, of course, uh, plus p squared times c squared. In other words, the hypotenuse is equal to the square root of the sum of the squares of the two sides. Now, we're going to relate the momentum of the particle to the wavelength. Remember that we can say that the momentum is equal to gamma mv, and this would be the rest mass, but of course we have to take into account gamma, or we can also say that from this equation right here and this equation up there, we can say that uh, wavelength, so we're going to go to here right here, we can say that the wavelength of the particle, lambda, is equal to h over the momentum, or we can say that the momentum is equal to h over lambda. If we plug that in here, instead of p, we can now say that the total energy is equal to the square root of the rest mass energy squared plus p squared, which is h squared over lambda squared times c squared. Now we have the total energy in terms of variables that we understand and know. So this is equal to the square root of the rest mass energy, which is 1.67 times 10 to the minus 27. We have to square that times the speed of light, 3 times 10 to the 8, quantity to the fourth power because it's c squared squared. And then we have to add to that Planck's constant squared, 6.626 times 10 to the minus 34. We have to square that. We have the speed of light squared, 3 times 10 to the 8 quantity squared, and we divide that by the wavelength squared, which we know to be 1 times 10 to the minus 15 quantity squared. So that'll give us a total energy. Good thing we have a calculator to work this one out. All right, let's go ahead. 6.626 e to the 34 minus, we square that, times 3 e to the 8, square that, divided by 1 e to the 15 minus and square that equals. Okay, now we're going to add to that this quantity right here, plus 1.67 e to 
e to the 27 minus, square that, times 3 e to the 8, square, square, close parentheses, and equals. Now we take the square root of that, and we end up with 2.49 times 10 to the minus 10 joules. So that's the total energy of that moving proton. Now let's go ahead and use this principle right here to find the kinetic energy. We're going to find the total energy, which we just did, and subtract from that the rest mass energy. The total energy right here is 2.49 times 10 to the minus 10 joules minus the rest mass energy. So let's find what that is equal to. So minus, that would be, hmm, let's write it down, 1.67 times 10 to the minus 27, that's the mass of the proton, times 3 times 10 to the 8 quantity squared. So that would be 2.49 times 10 to the minus 10 joules minus 1.67 e to the 27 minus times 3 e to the 8 squared out, close parentheses. That gives us minus 1.50 times 10 to the minus 10 joules. And then equals, when we subtract the two, we get 9.89 times 10 to the minus 11 joules. Now let's convert that to electron volts because that gives us a better feel for what that is. So this is equal to 9.89 times 10 to the minus 11 joules and converted to electron volts. One, one um, electron volt is 1.602 times 10 to the minus 19 joules. In other words, if I divide this by this quantity, I have everything in electron volts. Divide by 1.602 e to the 19 minus equals, and we have 617 million electron volts. So that's the kinetic energy of a single proton that's moving in such a way that it has a wavelength of one femtometer. Now, 617 million electron volts, it's almost equal to the rest mass of a proton, which is around 938 million electron volts. So it's about two-thirds the rest mass energy and hence the, the relativistic effects of such a proton. And that's how we deal with the Broglie waves at relativistic conditions. That's how it's done.